let's talk a little bit on the heat of solutions. We were talking about heat, which is essentially enthalpy. And we were talking about before on the heat of reaction and heat of sensible heat and latent heat. And now it's time to analyze this heat of solution. Uh, just let me tell you that this is a overview. We're not going to do problems right now. And this is just a little bit theory, so you know that there are other type of heat effects. It is also known as enthalpy of solution, or enthalpy of dissolution, or even heat of solution. Whatever you want to call it is the same. It's associated with the enthalpy change involved in the dissolution of a substance in a solvent at constant pressure and resulting in an infinite dilution. Yeah, this is interesting. Uh, essentially, is when you have a solute and you want to mix it in a solvent and you will see that you will generate a change on enthalpy. It might be positive or it might be negative. Uh, it's very important to note that ideal solutions have enthalpies of zero, so they don't actually change. When you have real solutions, which is of course very common, you're going to have changes on enthalpy either positive or negative and that means that your temperature is going to increase or decrease and so on. So this is important to account because if you are having a change in temperature which you weren't uh, aware of and you just start mixing stuff and the temperature starts to increase, you may burn something, you may melt something and so on. So this is a very important topic. We're not going to do that much problems into this. And yeah, let me tell you the simple three steps that involve uh, the dissolution of a substance. First step, we're going to break the solute solute attraction. That means you have this molecule of A, it's multiple molecules, and they are, have little interaction between them, okay? That's what makes them solid. If not, they were liquid or gas. They're going to be broken down. So when this broken or breaking of attractions is endothermic because uh, we're going to be talking about the lattice energy of the salts and so on. Now, once it is broken, it's, we're going to be talking about the solvent. The solvent is also in contact between each other. We're going to break that, those attractions. So forget the surface tension and all these intermolecular forces. We're going to break them. And this is also a endothermic process. For example, the hydrogen bonding between water, H2O, you know, it forms hydrogen bonds with hydrogen and oxygen. Well, breaking that uh, needs energy, okay? And once both are free, so I mean A is ready to be dissolved and B is ready to solve something, uh, we're going to form, and this is important, this was break, break, number three is form, the solvent solution attraction which is very interesting, the A-B attraction. And this is exothermic. We need to get energy to form those uh, attractions. And this is essentially the process. Of course, you might notice that we had the change on the first step, plus the change on the second step, plus the change on the third step. And depending on what is more, let's say, positive, this will be always negative, this will be always positive. And you may do a combination, you know, like if a big number is positive and small number is negative, you're going to have a positive change. You have a very small number positive and a very huge number negative, you're going to have negative. So that's why you will have positive and negative heat, uh, heat of solutions depending on, of course, the salts and the solvents, which, of course, many times is water. And actually, I bring you one table right here, enthalpy change of solution for some selected compounds, mm, hydrochloric and water, of course. And actually, we have water, if you were wondering. At 25 Celsius, this is important. We have a reference temperature. And you can see whatever you want here, ammonia, all these, for example, this will heat, and this is very common when you add many acids, for example, or base, bases. You are going to have very huge amount of energy freed, so probably you're going to increase the temperature. 
temperature is going to increase. And for example, when you add potassium chlorate, you're going to cool down the solution. So it's very interesting. You should definitely go and check out if you have a lab, go and check out and tell the instructor to let you mix hydrochloric acid with water. And you're going to feel if you touch the beaker, it's going to increase in temperature. And once again, sorry that I don't have problems right now, guys. We this is not in the scope in thermodynamics. I just wanted to give you this little insight. If you want to do this, go and check out my energy balance course. There are many, many problems there involving this dissolution of substances, for example, solute, solute, solvent, solute, etc. And of course, heat of solutions exercises. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out its content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues, or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.